three older siblings. I'm the youngest of four. We were already homeless, living on the beach when we entered care. Shelter homes, group homes, foster homes, I've been in over probably 15 placements. And during the first year we were in foster care, our social worker wouldn't allow us to, to live together or have contact with one another. Apparently um, it wasn't beneficial for us to be placed together. We always ran away because we, we always wanted to be together. We were on the run for over, over a year. For us, it meant that we could be together without having people regulate when I can see my brother, or when I could talk to my brother. They used to set up times, appointments, to where we could see each other for an hour, and we thought that was ridiculous. And then we ended up living in a tour bus for, for several months. We kind of stepped it up and we moved in with people in their cars. Sleeping on the beach was, it was a scary thing. I mean, our tents wouldn't even close. I just remember those nights just being so cold and just wondering why, why do we have to be on the beach? You know, we're 12, 13, 14 years old. We were always afraid to, to turn ourselves in no matter what, because we knew that they wouldn't place us together. My sister made this big old green card with a big I love you words in the front and I miss you words in the back and inside she drew flowers and she wrote me a letter pretty much thanking me for being there for her when she was going through a rough time. It obviously means a lot to me, I still have it to this day. During my time in foster care, you know, I've had a lot of um, great foster sisters who are still very close to me, but it's not the same as having your your blood sister or brother. Blood siblings, they, they know your history, they know you and the struggles you've had to go through. I definitely feel that if we were together, our time in foster care could have, would have been just a lot better. And even after care, we still need them. My sister, she has two kids now, and I have two kids. I want our kids to grow up together so they know what it feels like to have a family. High Hopes Board is part of the Hawaii Youth Opportunities Initiative and we're like the youth voice for youth in foster care. I enjoy that we're all about the same age so we can definitely relate a lot. They're really easy to get along with and they they always find ways of making like each other laugh. Like it's really, it's, there's not a day where I don't laugh when I'm in the meetings or whatnot and it's, it's really awesome. Before I entered foster care, I went to school at Farrington High School and I had four really close friends um, who I could, I guess, talk to about anything. We constantly talked on the phone, like it was like non-stop, like when I was at home it'd be like hours and hours of conversations. When I entered foster care, my relationships with my friends definitely changed. I felt like it was really, it, it was harder for me to talk to them about my problems. I actually never talked to them about being in foster care. It took me actually a very, very long time until I was like, actually able to talk to somebody about it. It didn't, I guess until I went through the peer mentoring program because everybody went through the same um, situations. It was definitely important because it's something that I never got to share and that's something that, it's like, it's like it was burdening me in a sense and when I was able to to express my situations with others, I felt a lot more freer, and it was a really good feeling. A peer-to-peer -peer relationship, I think it's it's a lot more meaningful. It's a lot closer. You can, it's easier to get closer in relationship because you can relate more to things that are going on. I'm grateful that they're always there for me, no matter what. Happy to have them in my life, because. They make me a happier person, especially when things are going wrong. What I'm most proud of is not being a negative statistic, being a part of the powerful 3% in the United States of foster youth who age out of the care system at 18 and graduated with their bachelor's degree by the age of 25. Being in foster care, uh, moving around is expected. They take you out of one school, place you in another district. After that, a couple months or years later, they take you out of that school and place you in another district to attend a new school. So in my situation, I was being placed outside of Franklin High School. I was going to be placed in a foster home in Pro City. And I had to speak up for myself and tell my guardian at Lightham that I wanted to still be at Franklin High School to stay connected with my friends, 
with the teachers, with my travel academy, and with the community. While I was in the travel academy, we were a cohort. So every day we'd have the same class. We would all be together as a group. Being able to be with them, converse with them, and hang out with them, and see them throughout the whole day really made my experience staying at Farrington uh, wonderful. And to graduate with them and see the same face and feel that bond, it was great. Belonging to something, you know, feeling your worth and where, where you belong. My foster mother was very strong and vocal in me wanting to continue my education. So she was one of the reasons why I wanted to attend school. Everyone that was involved in my case, my social worker, my transition specialist, my foster parents, they all were looking out for the best interest of me. And they had resources in the community, such as my mentor with Susanna Wesley Community Center that helped tutor me and guided me through my first year in college. My proudest accomplishments in college were making the Dean's List six times. Another proud accomplishment for me was making Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. I was inducted into Golden Key International Honor Society. To be eligible for that, you need to be a top 15% of your class. After graduating, um, now a full-time employee at Epic Ohana, I uh, plan to work there for a few years and then transfer off to law school and become a family court judge ultimately in the far future. I'm still searching for who I, you know, I am, who I really am, and what I'm, you know, what, what I'm here for, what I'm meant to do. Boxing really helps. You know, boxing really helps. Because um, apart from everything else, boxing is the only thing that I feel like I'm meant to do. I won the um, state championship. It's the biggest tournament here for boxing in Hawaii, and I won it. I'm going to try to make it to the Olympics and hopefully win a medal from there. I love my coach, you know, I love my coach. He's funny, you know, and he, you know, he, he'll be a coach sometimes, but he's usually like, we're, we're best friends. You know? I think what we're doing uh, does help develop the whole character, the whole individual, because we're trying to give them more than just boxing skills, but also give them people skills, give them some exposure, taking them on outer island trips to the mainland for tournaments. Uh, we also have study halls set up before Five. practices. Ten. on beat, five. I was brought up as a foster youth and I know how you know, they feel or they must feel, you know. You just feel lost and confused, you know, and you just try to work with it, you know. You know, I ran away a lot um, from my foster parents and stuff and I don't know where I was running to, but I was just running and um, assaults and, and, you know, robbery here and there. And as I started, you know, getting connected with the coach and everything and slowly, my mind started to change. The way I thought, you know, and, and my mentality just started to change, you know, and, and slowly but surely, you know, I started thinking, you know, this is where I belong. This is the surrounding I want to be, you know, and, and got me to think differently, you know, and thought, thought of changing, you know. Give me a motivated, dedicated, rough and stop All these people that I've been connected with since I got out of juvie, Constant motivation, you know, always pushing me and telling me to go to train and, and always there, you know. I feel like, you know, this could be, you know, the step for me to get to a better life or a life that I've always dreamed of, you know, so, yeah.